We're ready? We're ready. Yes. yes, ready. Are we talking? We'll be in a second here. No, I'm not. I don't want to. Want to call the order of the Board of Directors regular agenda uh, meeting for January 9th, 2019. First Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Mays. Please stand. Put your hand over your heart. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes, and I, I see that Director Graham is here, and we did post a teleconference, but she is present, so we will not be using that. Director Huff? Yeah, here. Director Statham? Here. President Muncie? Here. Vice President Mays? Here. And Director Graham? Here. Next is approval of the agenda. I so move. Second. First and a second. Roll call, please. Director Huff? Yes. Director Graham? Yes. Director Statham? Yes. Vice President Mays? Yes. And President Muncie? Yes. Item number two is public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the board on matters within the board's jurisdiction that are not listed in the agenda. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. The state law prohibits the board of directors from discussing or taking actions on items not included on the agenda. Is there any member in the audience who would like to address the board tonight? Please, ma'am, if you can go to the podium and state your name and area of residence. Uh, yes, my name is Olivia de Holdfield, and I'm a resident uh, of uh, Yucca Mesa for oh, over 20 years. And um, I was uh, given uh, two bills uh, in 2019 for the first time. One, so I called and said, what is the other bill for? It was $54, I think. And I was told that I now have to pay for the um, uh, water hookup, which is on the property just across the street, which is, you know, my property, but it's across the street. And of course, I don't use that. Um, so uh, then when I called up and asked about this, they said, come to the meeting. Here I am. So basically, my question is, uh, if, you know, this is, I have seen that the man who checks my water meter also goes to the other meter every month and checks it. Of course, nobody ever uses that water. My question is just, why not put a lock on it? Why charge me? Why does this poor man have to do this extra work? And for me to pay $54 is, on top of the fire attacks that they're making also now, it's, I, I'll have, to, I'll get thinner and thinner, that's all I can say. <laughs> so if anybody can bring the, you know, bring my, direct me to where I should go to ask about this, I would appreciate it. I don't know if you want to talk about it. Yes, ma'am, this is, this is an item that's come before the board a couple of times. We do have a solution. The general manager can direct a member of his staff to answer your question or get a hold of you at a later time and explain. The general, who is the general, manager? general manager, music. You know, President Muncie, I could address it right now if you'd like. Sure. Once the meter is installed, whether you use it or not, you have to pay the monthly fixed charges, which is probably $23 a month, so you probably have two months worth of charges. If you didn't want to pay those, you could have your meter returned and refunded to the district, and then you would no longer have to pay any monthly charges. So the is out of the Correct. Our current policy says once you install it, you must pay the monthly fixed charges. And I think here, if you have any other questions, here's my card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Item number three is the consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar are acted upon by one motion unless a board member wishes an item to be acted upon separately, in which case it will be removed from the consent calendar. In front of us is 3A demand list, demand list 93748-93880, and wastewater demand list 2636 to 2653. And 3B, the 2018 12, that would be December 12th, regular board meeting minutes. I'll move the consent calendar. Second. First and second, a roll call, please. Director Huff? Yes. Director Statham? Yes. President Muncie? Yes. Vice President Mays? Yes. And Director Graham? Yes. You know what, I actually did have one question. Okay, go ahead. Director Statham has one question. We'll pause here before we move to the next item. You're on page nine of the wastewater fund demand list, um, it's just page nine, and there's only partial page of that demand list. Uh, and check number 2650 has a yellow highlight on it in my copy, was that highlighted for any particular reason? You know, um, it, not really, other than it exceeds 25,000, but so do other ones. <coughs> the budget, so. I didn't see anything unusual, but I thought, well, why, why are they highlighting that? Or is there something I'm supposed to know or understand? Yeah, I will check and report to the next All meeting. All right, thank you. <laughs> Next, we have item 4A, which is 2019 committee meetings and assignments. And this is uh, for information only. Uh, we're going to discuss the 2019 committee appointments for the High Desert Water Board of Directors. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, staff, members of the public. Uh, each year, as part of when we vote in a new president, we review the committees. And the district committees are formed to review items prior to going to the whole board so that the committee can take a look at it and see if we should move it forward and go to the board, if we need some additional information. And they all are aligned with our mission, vision, and strategic planning. So I believe Kaylee referred to all of the board members about if they had any desires from last year to this year. So she put together the current uh, 18 committees, which the 2018 committees, I think all of the board members opted to stay on the same committees. And it's uh, present, up to President Muncie to appoint everyone per their request that's listed on page nine. And I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Is there any comment from the audience? No, I'll move it back to the directors. Does anybody have a comment on this? And then I'll make one suggestion. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I would, I would like to suggest for the board to consider number 17, the general manager's performance evaluation. My thought is that perhaps uh, it should be done by the president and the vice president of the board each year. After I thought about it, it just seemed like that might be the best way to go because the president and vice president, you know, work a little closer with the general manager than the directors do. So that's just a thought that I'm putting out there for consideration. You know, and in support of that position, uh, I'm not sure that you and I didn't get on that when we weren't in that position. Correct. Yeah. I appointed you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bad guy. Oh. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Last year, what did you do on that, on that ad hoc committee? Because I, I know the board met in closed session. We had a discussion with the general manager on his performance evaluation. So what did the, well, the ad hoc Well, dire Director Statham and I met and discussed a number of things, and kind of we came to sort of a consensus of what we thought was uh, the accolades and everything, and then we took it to the board and said, here's our uh, draft of what we believe, the, uh, how the general manager should be uh, rated, and I think we got a few 
we had a little bit of feedback from a couple of board members and we made the adjustments and then it was then presented to the general manager. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? So, so you make the recommendation to be myself and Vice President Mays on that ad hoc? Yeah. The okay. We'll make that change then for the general, general manager performance evaluation to the president and vice president. And then if we could put an asterisk on this to remind us in future years to always have the, put those positions mm -hmm. on that. Is there any other suggestions on the committee assignments? Because there's only one that I would like to make is, is the two plus two with the town of Yucca Valley. I know that that hasn't regularly occurred. I, don't, I think it's been a number of years actually. But I would like to try to jumpstart that and have regular meetings with the town. I think that that our constituents expect that out of us and uh, we're, we're better together. So I would like to personally be on that two plus two with the town of Yucca Valley and um, either have Director Graham or Director Statham switch with me in the Ames project. I would make the suggestion that that would be Director Statham since you're I volunteer. Of that. Thank you. Which one was, I'm sorry, which one was Director Statham going to go on? So he's going to switch from the two plus two with the Yucca Valley to the Ames project. Oh, great. <clears throat> and he'll be on the Ames project with Director Huff. You'll remain on the two plus two with me with the town of Yucca Valley. The, the final question I would like to ask the board, is there any ad hocs or subcommittees on here that we're missing? Um, I do have one suggestion if, if they're after hearing your comments. Well, it's probably you're going to bring it up uh, because you approached me about it, but it's something that I've thought about and I think is an excellent idea. Would be happy to participate in it, but don't, you know, any, any, any two would be fine as well. But given the, what might be significant changes to uh, state energy requirements over the next uh, several years. I think looking into what that might entail, what the ramifications might be, and how the district could most well position itself not to be caught flat-footed or blindsided would be appropriate. And so having, I like the idea of having an ad hoc uh, energy uh, committee for at least a, a year or two until things settle back down again, energy-wise. I think that's a great idea. <clears throat> I, I think that's a good idea, and maybe we can replace the Ames project with that committee, because the Ames project has been completed now for a number of years. We set that up when we were working with Bighorn, the county, and Mojave to build that recharge facility, and it's completed, so there probably isn't a need at this point for that committee. And I, I did call Director Statham because he's mentioned over the years uh, about solar energy and reducing the carbon footprint, and I think the district's always been great stewards of the environment. I think we've been leading the state of California in, in water use and consumption, so especially for outside irrigation. It just makes sense to us that we really should form a committee and start looking at the overall a footprint of the district and how can we be more energy efficient I think I think that that really is going to be the push in the coming years and we should try to get ahead of it I like the idea of, of removing the Ames project and um, director Huff would you be willing to participate in that engineer in your G committee yes okay probably Bob and I are the closest in understanding energy excellent would you think so okay. happy to could we maybe have uh, Director Statham, since this is something that he, he's uh, pretty um, interested in, maybe come up with, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it should be beyond just how it relates to us and what we're doing as far as energy and, and the footprint, because there's going to be things that are going to be happening around us, things that are going to be coming out of the state, out of the federal government with 
all this talk with climate change and what's going on in Washington, D.C., especially with the Democratic Party. <coughs> you know, they seem to be kind of loose about a lot of this, that maybe that should be also entwined into what you're looking at Definitely. as to keeping track of what's happening beyond us. And there are, there are some regional <coughs> options that uh, we might consider exploring. Um, I, I've been in presentations at uh, Aqua uh, talking about some regional energy <coughs> options that are becoming available and some examples in the states of early adapters who actually have formed uh, JPAs, um, energy JPAs, is within a region and then all share uh, the cost and the benefit of a, of a regional energy program. So definitely. Great. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Final thought I had is the Morongo Basin Pipeline Commission with NWA only has one member on there. That's Director Statham. Should we have a backup for him? And the same thing with Aqua JPIA with Vice President Mays. Should we have backups identified for those? I believe I'm the backup for Roger on JPIA currently. So is it, and Roger has been very, very good at going. I know over the years I've attended at times and he's always there. Is it appropriate to have another board member at those meetings? It, um, I, I'll tell you the last one I went to this past aqua was absolutely excellent. So normally in these board committees, we, we have more than one member that's going to, to digest the information and talk some, among those two members to bring back ideas to the board. Is that appropriate? I, I believe that's really a question for the board. And you know, Roger's the one who's been attending them all, so he would have the best. Yeah, I'm not gonna remove him, that's for sure, because he <laughs> loves it. Is there- I don't care, I don't care. <clears throat> It doesn't really make any difference. There's only one vote that, that any district has. So if, when it comes down to the, uh, the executive meetings and so forth, there's only one vote, whether you're the one or the other person is the one, so. Hey, Roger, do you see many districts sending more than one representative, or is it generally just one representative? Only one. Okay. I think having a backup would be very appropriate, yeah. and Ed can certainly fill that role or one of us. I, I've attended uh, and got value out of it, but I think Roger is just doing an outstanding job. I, I don't think he's missing things. No, I, I don't think, and I don't mean to, to insinuate that at all. I just want to make sure that we're taking a full look at all these committees and they're, they're staffed appropriately. The other one we've would be the pipeline commission and you same thing as roger you've been doing a great job you come back you've always reported on it is there value in having a backup on that committee we should have a backup for sure so is it uh, you know president muncie i think it's great to have a backup but i don't think we necessarily need to name that individual for like when roger goes they always are with aqua conferences so for instance Director Statham could be the backup, and maybe he's not attending that aqua conference. So maybe we, if Roger can't make it, we notify the board members who would like to be, attend that, who could get there early and attend that in place of him instead of specifically designating one individual. Perfect. I agree. I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the recommendation is just on uh, switching the aims to an energy committee with Huff and Statham. The two plus two at the town of Yucca Valley would be Graham and Muncie. And the GM performance evaluation would be Mays and Muncie. Item 4B is Proposition 1. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, uh, this is kind of a housekeeping item, you know, with Prop 1. We're part of Mojave's integrated plan. Mojave was awarded 407,000, our share is $130,000. So we have to um, approve their indemnity agreement for this loan. So I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Public comment? No, back to the board. I have nothing. 
What is the grant for going to be used for? We're going to use that for environmental work for phases two and three. I'll move staff recommendation. Second. Roll call, please. <laughs> Direct, Director Graham? Yes. President Muncie? Yes. Director Statham? Yes. Vice President Mays? Yes. And Director Huff? Yes. Out of 4C is resolution 1823, summarily vacation. Uh, vacation of easement. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board. Originally, <clears throat> as part of our wastewater project, we uh, acquired this easement, and then there were some changes to the alignment, so we no longer need this easement. So we have resolution 1823 to vacate this unit, this easement. I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. I see anybody in the audience? <laughs> Board members have a comment? Yeah, I have a comment. I'm not sure I'm very happy about this. Directors don't get any vacation. Why should we be given easements <laughs> vacations? That's what I want to know. I knew he was going to do something. California State uh, New Unemployment Laws. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We have to HR. You know, I'm on the HR Why committee. Am I not surprised? I'm, I'm on the HR committee. We we have to do that. We, Director you know. Statham, we only require your presence twice a month, <laughs> Wednesdays. That's the time you're on vacation. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to. Well, in that case, I'm like, for it. I'd like to move the recommendation of uh, resolution 18-23, some summary, summary vacation of easement. Second. Roll call, please. President Muncie? Yes. Vice President Mays? Yes. Director Graham? Yes. Director Huff? Yes. And Director Statham? Yes. Item 40's proposal to revise the TDS work plan report. Any audience member? No. Any directors have comments? Sounds like it's a requirement. Mm -hmm. Housekeeping. And there was no vacation involved. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody has a comment, I'm going to move that the board of directors authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with Carollo to revise its TDS work plan report in the amount of $35,830. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Mays? Yes. Director Graham? Yes. President Muncie? Yes. Director Statham? Yes. And Director Huff? Yes. Item 4 is a vehicle purchase. Staff has recommended that the Board of Directors authorize the General Manager to accept a bid of $38,920.26 from Elk Grove Auto, winner Chevrolet, to purchase a 2019 four-wheel drive Chevrolet truck to be assigned to the chief plant operator. And this is General Manager. Yes, uh, Mr. President, members of the board, as part of our budget, we need to get a vehicle for the chief plant operator. Um, the budget was $50,000. Mike Hayward put it out to bid, and the state price came in at almost over $10,000 below that. The one caveat is, though, our current director of water operations may take the new vehicle and his vehicle may go to the chief plant operator. But uh, we're looking for the board to approve this purchase from Elk Grove in the amount of 38920 
and I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Any member of the board have a comment? Seeing none, would someone make a motion? I'll move staff recommendation. Second. Roll call, please. Director Statham? Yes. Vice President Mays? Yes. Director Huff? Yes. Director Graham? Yes. And President Munsley? Yes. Item 4S, 4F is a lease copier for the administrative building. Staff is recommending the Board of Directors awards the lowest qualified bid to AIS to lease a copy star CS-80521CI copier in the amount of $39,979.20 over 60 months. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. AI, uh, we used to lease our copiers from Desert Imaging. They have combined, merged with AIS, so they're now part of AIS, so it still is a local company. And Mike received two bids. They are the low bid, so we're looking for uh, the board to approve this lease to, from AIS for five years for the copier for the administration building in the amount of 39979200 and I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Any member of the board of directors have a question or comment? My only comment is I really appreciate the fact when uh, we can buy locally and deal with local vendors. It always makes me really happy, so thank you. How many years have we had John, working with John here? Yeah, I believe over five. That's why we had a five year contract and I know we compared it with Xerox and his equipment was just as good and was less expensive and better service when we had a Xerox prior to it we'd have to wait days sometimes to get someone and now they're here as soon as we need them and our tenant motion no. no I'd like to move the recommendation that's <coughs> The Board of Directors award the lowest qualified bid to AIS to lease a copy star CS8052 C1 copier in the amount of $39,979.20 over the next 60 months. Second. Roll call, please. Director Statham? Yes. President Muncie? Yes. Director Huff? Yes. Vice President Mays? Yes. And Director Graham? Yes. Item 5A is a wastewater reclamation project update. Samantha Mena. And the expanded use loan legally has been approved by our attorney, Kelly Salt at BB&K and the state's attorney. So we're just waiting for them to execute the agreement and bring it to the board for their approval. And just to add on to that, the final assessment numbers um, or estimates have been sent to Webb and Associates. So within a couple of weeks, we're gonna have our kickoff meeting and we should soon have numbers. And the state right now is going through a conversion of software systems. So there could be some delays initially in payments and even approvals because they're converting from one system to the other. Any questions from the directors? Item six is directors reports and comments for information purposes only on subjects not covered by the agenda and with no action to be taken. Start down here on my far right. Director Huff? I have nothing, thank you. Director Staten? I have nothing. Two for two. <laughs> I have nothing. Oh my three gosh. for three. All <laughs> <laughs> on you. I, I have nothing. I'm just not going to be back here sitting at the board meeting. Well, this is embarrassing. I'm going to start with page one and read everything here. <laughs> Got nothing either. <laughs> How about a vacation? <laughs> Hey. Bob vacation. 
Item number seven is manager's report from information only on subjects not covered by the agenda and no action to be taken. Administrative assistant three, Samantha Mena. Human Resource Manager, Lonnie Brown. What, what's considered uh, a business use? Is driving to? If you drive to, um, uh, driving to uh, the different I'm not a defensive driver. I'm one of those <laughs> other ones. Best defense is a good offense. On the passenger side of my vehicle, the floorboard's all dented where Tara keeps pushing her feet down to try to <laughs> stop the car. That's Tara. <laughs> Director Huff should probably take the in-person training then. <laughs> the online classes uh, in February also. <laughs> Yeah, you go ahead and send me that because it'll be a few months before I'll be released to drive. Lonnie, when you take it online, can you take it in parts? Or do you have to take it all at once? Probably the other question, can the general manager take it for us? <laughs> can I take a course? <laughs> When did this start applying to, gen to, to uh, elected officials? I understand with employees, but, but when did it start? I can vouch for him, and he's been driving me to meetings for the last two years. I, uh, I'm, I'm not the one that was behind a slow car in the carpool lane that pulled out of the carpool lane with a CHP officer right there and got a ticket. <laughs> not, 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 not talking about aggressive <coughs> drivers here. 
You know what, Director Stadium? If this is your Rotarian buddy, yeah. 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 If you were driving out to Mojave for a board meeting and unfortunately were in an accident, probably would say where were you going and why were you going there. So whoever you were in the accident with would probably sue whoever they could if it was deemed to be your fault. And since you were on business, they would, High Desert Water District would be mentioned this way by going through this class, then you'd be covered under our policy here at the district. Can I take it on my motorcycle? You don't have to actually drive your car. It's oh. paper and <clears throat> Tony, would you mind sending that again? Because when I, you sent it, I just deleted it because I didn't think it was germane to, to me. You guys keep going. You're going to talk her into annual driver's training. <laughs> Lonnie, before we move on, we have two great comments about our employees, and that's a reflection, I think, on your work. Uh, the first is written by one of our High Desert employees, Sherry Nutter. She says, Ms. Smith wanted to take the time and make sure that Corey Moran's supervisor was aware of how kind and understanding he was while talking to her on the phone today. Ms. Smith is 92 years young and was very upset after receiving a past due notice with a termination date on it. She wanted to let us know how patient Corey was, how he explained her account so that she could understand and then took payments over the phone. She was very happy with the level of customer service that he provided with her today. The second is a comment card, how are we doing? And uh, we had, not sure if it's a Mr. or Mrs. Palomares wrote, great help, very helpful, made process real easy. And referring to the employee, Jenny. What's Jenny's last name? Bowers. Bowers. Thank you for the good work that you do, Lonnie. We really appreciate it. They do a great job. Communication Legislative Officer Jennifer Pohl. Um, the State Water Resources Control Board um, recently um, released the implementation plan for the Low Income Water Rate Assistance Program. That is that one that everyone's been hearing about as they go to conferences. So um, I reviewed it, uh, we made some notes, and we're going to be presenting it to the Public Advisory Committee on Monday asking for feedback. There's various options within that program and that's what the State Water Resources Control Board is asking of us. And then it will go to the Legislative Committee for additional input. Um, and I'll keep you up, I'll keep the board updated as to what will happen with that. And then tomorrow we have about 90 students coming to the Water District. Again, we're gonna host a field trip for Naga Elementary or Yucca Valley Elementary. Um, junior water wizards. So we're excited about that. It'll be a fun day tomorrow. Director of Water, Op Director of water Operations, Tony Culver. I have nothing tonight. Chair Manager, Ed Music. Um, there's a regional board meeting tomorrow morning down in Palm Desert. Uh, next week I'm scheduled for jury duty and then CASA is in a couple of weeks. So depending upon what we have on the agenda, since the CASA conferences would be the same week as our second, our fourth board meeting, we may cancel that meeting. Okay. Future agenda items requested by the board. I'd like to pull two of them. Number four and number eight. Uh, the Bureau of Rec grant program. I don't know where I heard about it, but Ed said when he checked with somebody from the Bureau of Rec that they said that there was no such program. So somewhere I got some information. That's why I put it on there. And number eight, the family day for the employees and their families. We'll pull that for now. Okay, any others? All right, item number nine is adjournment. This meeting is adjourned at 614.